Hi, this is John Starks, and you're watching Real Fans, Real Talk. Real Fans, Real Talk.com. Where Arthur Domus, Trip Young, and Intern Tom. For the white and black fans, Asia to Manhattan. I'll get all my facts from my bro, Mark. I personally felt that if Ewing would have made the layup, went to overtime, I think you guys could have beaten that Orlando Magic team. What do you think? Oh, for sure. Yeah, for sure. You know, we, we had a lot of confidence, and then, uh, you know, like I say, it just comes down to really miss or makes in this game right here. Uh, people don't understand what it took for Patrick to even play in that game. You know what I mean? He had to get his knee drained uh, the day of the game, and and for him to play uh, basically on one leg, uh, you know, I can't say enough about his heart and what he meant to us as our leaders. And so. Um, if we could have got to Orlando, yeah, well, well, I felt like that we went back to the championship, and that would have been great because we got a chance to face Houston again and redeem ourselves. All right. Now, one of the reasons why the Orlando Magic got swept that year is because, you know, they were going up against the more experienced team, the Houston Rockets. I feel you guys could have beaten the Magic as well. But do you think rematch Houston Rockets, you would have taken it all the way? Yeah, we felt like that we were going to beat them this next time around. We had a little bit more incentive, obviously, losing the year before. And so, yeah, we felt like that we had team was a little bit more experienced for the, for the final uh, push. Uh, coming in, still had D Harp, and uh, we had some very solid players on our team. So, yeah, we felt like that if we got back there. I was looking forward to get back there, obviously, to redeem myself uh, doing that final, but it just didn't work out. All right, for those of you who want to know the stats on that hypothetical Magic Knicks, I looked into the archives. They actually, you guys actually split the regular season two games and two games and took them to overtime in one of the home games. So for all of you doubters out there, it was definitely a reality that they could have beaten that Magic team. Now you have the dunk. You got a lot of great moments as a Nick. Uh, is there any other moments that aren't as famous as the dunk that, you know, kind of stand out in your Knicks career? Not really. Uh, you know, I'm all about team. Uh, really wasn't about individual. Probably uh, winning the sixth man of the year award uh, just because uh, uh, that year I had to uh, come off the bench uh, because Allen came. Uh, that's probably was the most gratifying from an individual standpoint. Uh, but, you know, as a team, we accomplished a lot during that era. And uh, we are uh, appreciative that we had time to play with one another and uh, the friendships that we developed uh, during that time still st sticks to this day. So, um, you know, only thing, like I say, well, if I ever had to go back in time and change is that Akeem didn't block that shot and we have a championship. So other than that, yeah. I would like that to go back in time and change that too. I'm one of the biggest fans of the Knicks, but a well-known uh, Knicks fan, Spike Lee, um, it's obviously one of the faces of the franchise. What does Spike Lee mean to the Knicks? It means a, a lot. You know, he's obviously one of the Knicks' greatest fans and greatest supporters. And, you know, on that sideline when you run out that tunnel, you always see Spike Lee during my time. And he was always there, and he was the inspiration to, you know, all the players. Real fans, real talk .com. Well, Arthur Domus, Trip Young, and intern Tom for the white and black fans, Asia to Manhattan. I'll get all my facts from my bro, Mark the Stats, man.